I'm Kemi Olatunji. I'm the pharmacy director at Riverside Regional Medical Center and Riverside Behavioral Health Center. And I will be talking today about the Johnson & Johnson vaccine that just got added to our toolkits in this uh, fight against the pandemic. When was the Johnson & Johnson vaccine authorized by the FDA and did it follow the same FDA approval pathway as the previous two vaccines? So the Johnson & Johnson vaccine was approved late February, so around February 27, and uh, there were no exceptions made in terms of the standards that needed to be met before receiving the EUA, which is the emergency use authorization by the FDA. So pretty much the same data analysis, assessment of the efficacy and the safety profile, and also uh, consulting with national infection disease experts just to validate and verify that definitely worthy of, of addition to, to the toolkit. How is the Johnson & Johnson vaccine different from the two COVID-19 vaccines prior to that? So the Johnson & Johnson vaccine is somewhat different in, in multiple regards. So the first very important key factor is the fact that you only need one dose as compared to the two previous vaccines by Pfizer and also Madonna, where you require two different doses and you would have to wait for 21 days and 20 days consecutively. Um, but for the Johnson & Johnson vaccine, you only need one dose and then you're done. The other difference is the storage and the handling um, requirements, uh, which is a big deal for the Johnson & Johnson vaccine. Uh, we struggled with being able to store the uh, Pfizer vaccine initially because it required uh, ultra-cold uh, freezer temperature storage. But, you know, with the Johnson & Johnson vaccine, uh, it can be stored at refrigerated temperature for a significantly long time, so about 90 days in a refrigerator. And even if you put it in the freezer, it's, uh, it can be stored for about six months. So I think that gives us a lot of flexibility to utilize this new vaccine in areas where the uh, cold chain requirements may have been challenging for Pfizer and also for Madonna. And, you know, especially focusing on our underserved communities, just making sure that they have the access that everybody else has. And so I think Johnson & Johnson brings that to the table. How effective is the Johnson & Johnson vaccine? It's pretty effective. Uh, definitely when you look at mild to moderate COVID disease, uh, the effectiveness is about 67% compared to the Pfizer and Moderna uh, vaccine, which is, you know, in the high 90s. However, I mean, the most important thing that people really worry about is severe COVID disease and the risk of hospitalization or even death. So with the Johnson & Johnson vaccine, the effectiveness against severe dis disease and also hospitalization death is uh, roughly 85%. So it's pretty high. It's high enough where, whereby ad adding that particular vaccine to a toolkit is very, very important. And, you know, most vaccines, the required um, efficacy is about 50%. So at 85%, that's pretty strong. So I think just to encourage everybody that um, no matter what vaccine you have access to, whether it's the Moderna vaccine, Pfizer vaccine, or even the J&J &J vaccine, uh, it can provide significant protection in making sure that you don't experience severe uh, COVID disease, uh, hospitalization, or even death. How old do you have to be for you to be able to get the Johnson & Johnson vaccine? So with the Pfizer vaccine, you have to be at least 16 years old. With the Madonna vaccine, and then now with the J&J &J vaccine, you need to be at least 18 years old. So it's pretty comparable. Uh, but just to be encouraging, there are existing studies with the Pfizer and Moderna vaccine to, to look at the efficacy and the safety profile in patients as young as 12 years old so that's currently ongoing and we would expect that maybe J, &J will follow suit and try to study uh, the efficacy and safety profile in patients who are much younger too as well. 
how long does it take for the Johnson & Johnson vaccine to take effect? So Johnson & Johnson vaccine, again, remember, is a one-dose vaccine compared to the Pfizer vaccine, which requires two doses, and Moderna that requires two doses as well. Um, with the Pfizer and Moderna vaccine, you have to wait to get the second dose after 21 days and 20 days, respectively. But with Johnson & Johnson, once you get the one dose, you're pretty much done. So anywhere from two to four weeks after being vaccinated with the one dose of Johnson & Johnson vaccine, you would expect to um, benefit from the efficacy profile. So 28 days would be uh, the ideal. So again, once you get the one dose after four weeks, you can expect to uh, benefit from it in terms of reduction in the risk of severe disease, hospitalization, or even death. So, I mean, we've been trying to address this pandemic for over a year and, you know, we've continued to make a lot of progress. We've been uh, working towards changing the trajectory of the pandemic in a positive way. And the addition of the Johnson & Johnson vaccine is another huge step in that direction. Um, we have to continue to practice social distancing and masking and hand washing. But, you know, for people who have uh, been hesitant in terms of receiving either of the two vaccines, which is Pfizer and Moderna, this, there's a new one. So I would say, you know, just uh, educate yourself, get as much information as, as, as possible and think about it very carefully. I think it's going to take each and every one of us coming together and playing our role for us to be able to effectively end this pandemic. Um, just ask the right questions, talk to the right people and make the, the best decision for yourself.